We often get asked about our thoughts on diode lasers, so it works out that one showed up at the shop today. Brian got wind of it and kind of took over, though. Here's everything that came in the box. The assembly for this was pretty easy. It only took about 30 minutes to put the whole thing together. And the last step was snapping the laser head into place. Right? Not better the first time. He's right though, the first time it definitely snapped in. Now those all together, we need to figure out how to get this thing to run. <laughs> so here's an interesting little design touch, Michael. They have a linear shaft that goes all the way across. There was a second box, and this had all the add-ons on it. It had the air assist, a rotary tool, that's cool, and it also had some cones to prop up the workspace, and pieces that allow you to raise the entire laser up to work on thicker pieces. Power on, the machine, oh, you gotta hit the baton. You wanna sneak in and yeah, hit the baton? Yeah, sure, what do I do? Hit the baton. What's, I don't know what that means. So the, the, power on the, front. the baton? On the front, push it, see what happens. This one? Yeah, see what Look at that! Woo! Do, 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 do. It's so loud! Okay. Any machine for this one? I mean, the new one. One thing that I thought was really nice about this laser is that it works on light bulbs, so we just need to configure our same laser cutter computer to recognize the new machine. It's also on the internet, but I haven't looked it up. You know, I think a Google search might actually be quicker than this, but... I don't think Google knows yet. It's 20 inches about by 20 inches about. I know anything about 406 this. by 406. Bam. Boom. Yeah, it knew. Oh, it did it right. It does it right for the Laguna, too. Okay, so you're going to be... Is it going to be rear left? Yeah, I think so. And then it was time for the first cuts. Yeah. You just you're great. Great. <laughs> Oh, it's so beautiful. All right, stop. You're gonna cut through the table if you're not careful. That's part of the fun here. We took a couple of minutes to figure out focusing and what the power said it should be. Um, that was fun, it was kind of low key, and you know, we didn't take it too seriously. These little cones came in the second box, and I believe that they're an add on. Definitely worth it. It allows for a little ventilation underneath and allows for the workpiece to just be raised up a little bit. But it is worth taking the time to set it up right. The biggest downside about this laser that I found was there is a lack of ventilation. So you need to use it in a well-ventilated space or position it underneath a hood. Uh, definitely worth it. You can see all the smoke coming out and it was a little intense. So open a door, open a window, get a fan running, and then you'll be fine. This is a 10 watt diode, which I believe is this company's big laser. Diodes come a little bit more powerful than this. I would definitely not go less than 10 watts. Um, I feel like it would be really lacking power and you would probably be limited to an eighth inch cut. Now that 
we've played with it a little bit and kind of figured out some rough settings, I'm gonna do the first real project. I'm gonna make a Maker's Workshop stamp. To focus the laser head, all you do is drop this little metal bar down and line it up with the top of the workpiece. You then move the bar out of the way and snap on the uh, plastic guard, which also serves to catch any deflected laser beams and protect your eyes. Since we have more than one laser set up on this computer, I made sure that it was set to go to the right laser cutter. And then I framed it and I sent the design file to the laser. It definitely takes longer and more passes to achieve the same results as with the other laser cutter, but it is in fact able to get very similar results. It just takes a little bit more time. For reference, the Glowforge, which is a 45 watt CO2 laser, can cut through rubber stamp material in one pass. This took four slow passes and I still needed to peel the design out at the end. And it only seemed fair to give it a try on wood, so I ran the same file on the piece of wood that I was using underneath it to keep the stamp material flat. It also kind of will go through to the table, just something to be aware of so that it can be avoided. Be sure to put a wasteboard underneath it. All in all, I was impressed. It is, in fact, a great entry-level way to get into a little bit of automation. It takes a little bit more time, but it is way more friendly to a budget. So if you're just getting started with lasers, this definitely is a viable way to go. And I would just recommend getting the most powerful laser that you can afford at the time so that you don't outgrow it faster than you need to. And as an added bonus, this particular laser company does include 50 free design files, so you can get it started right when it arrives.